Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, today, you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about squirrels. Everybody, it seems, and his brother has a problem with squirrels. Doesn't matter if you live in the country, doesn't matter if you live in the city. Squirrels are a nuisance. You know, they're a spring, summer, fall nuisance. Busy little boogers, they're out there trying to get stuff stored away for the winter. They, they just wreak havoc on your bird feeders and all that stuff. We're going to use something that's easily obtained by the average homeowner. On the video that I'm going to tag in the end screen, I actually made something out of sheet metal. Not everybody has that ability or that access to the materials. So I had one viewer suggest doing the same thing with a trash can lid. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty brilliant idea. So it took me a little while to find an old trash can lid laying on the side of the road. But I did. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to adapt the trash can lid. And we're going to make a squirrel guard for a bird feeder. So hang in there. And uh, we'll watch this thing go from one end to the other. Here it is right here. You can see it's kind of smashed down. It's got some dents and stuff in it, you know. Our squirrels aren't that particular, so we'll we'll do the best we can with what we have here. But we'll start out by uh, popping this guy back out. At least get it popped out before we get started. Now we're going to take this handle. We're going to drill these little welds loose, those spot welds loose, and get rid of this handle because we have to drill a hole right up through here. Then I'm going to try to use that handle for the support. There's another problem we have with this here. It's got a bead around it, similar to what I put on my homemade one. Uh, but this one here, unfortunately, the squirrels might be able to jump out, climb up real close to the, to the underneath side of this, and they might be able to stretch out and grab a claw. All they got to do is get one claw onto something, and they can fling themselves around and get on top of something. Well, I got to deal with that too, so I don't want to leave that exactly like that. But I don't want to leave a sharp edge either. You know, I don't want to cut that off and leave a sharp edge. We're going to find approximately the center. There's a start. It's pretty close to center. Now the pipe that we're going to use is one inch. So that's going to have to be bored just a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that just a little bit larger right there. You got the idea. I'm going to go all the way around and try to make that to where they can't get a hold of it. Actually, this seems to be a little better way of doing it off the, uh, off the horn of the homemade anvil. Now we're going to take this handle we just cut off. We're going to estimate about the center position. We're going to make two out of the three required supports. If you just put two on here, the support's going to... It'll, it'll flip back and forth if you just have two. If you have a, a third one and you make them 120 degrees apart, then it'll have a tendency to set and hang more level. So we're going to go ahead and trim these up a little bit, get ready to uh, rivet those in place. Again, they don't have to be exact. They don't have to be perfect. Just have to be able to sustain squirrels and wind. A little bit of snow but that's going to go here and this is going to go there and like i said approximately 120 degrees the third one i'll have to make and go over here so i'll take a piece of this hanging strap and i'll bend a little bit of a 90 on it doesn't have to be perfect but we'll put a little bit of a 90. cut it the approximate length so it's at least reasonably close to the same good thing about a hack like this is this is all nominal. All the dimensions are nominal. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes in this and get ready to rivet those in place. Now if you're lucky enough to have a hole punch, you can set a hole punch for an eighth of an inch. These are replaceable dies and you can put any size on them you want. But I make this an eighth of an inch. This metal here is very heavy metal. This is a, that's an 18 gauge hanging strap. This should be much easier. This looks to be about like a 22 gauge 
galvanized. That's what it feels like, a 22 gauge galvanized. Much easier. I know everybody doesn't have these kind of tools, but it's no big deal. You got a drill bit and a battery drill, so you can do that. Now on these guys here, I'm gonna punch a bigger hole. I'm gonna use this Whitney. This is a, a Whitney punch, not to be confused with JC Whitney, even though you can buy a cheaper version of this at on JC Whitney very, very cheaply. This one here, not so much. This is not cheap. This is an authentic old Whitney I've had for near 40 years. I got a 932nd punch in it. Okay, I got me some pop rivets and an 8-inch drill bit. You should be able to slide your pole right through there, just like this. If you're using a 1-inch a, a black iron or 1-inch galvanized pole. Run your pole through there like that. Get to the desired elevation, you can go ahead and run self tapping screws right in through this. And I'll show you, we'll go ahead and shape this to match that uh, that circumference once we get it installed on the pole that uh, we've got to go dig a hole and put in the yard yet. Now, I really got that smashed down good. They might be able to hook them finger in there, but I tell you what, they don't have much room at all. With that big old quarter inch or big old uh, 3 16 loop on there. They had enough room to get several claws on it. I don't think they're going to be able to get a hold of it. But if they do, well, we'll do something different. If I have to, I'll cut it off. But I don't think I'm going to have to. From an old nasty trash can to a squirrel guard for a bird feeder. A simple thing you can do to make your rivets uh, more secure. If you notice when you put your pop rivets in, it just swells out down here at the bottom. And it can, um, it can definitely be pulled off of there. So you can just go ahead and set this on your anvil right here. And you can grab those over. If you want, you can kind of doll this up a little bit right here, too. Well, guys, this might not look like part of the story of um, battling squirrels with the trash can lid, but it really does, simply because you got to stop and wonder uh, sometimes what happens to old farm equipment that's 100 years old uh, whenever it's put out to rest, you know, or, or doesn't end up uh, in the salvage yard. This happens to be what's called a dump rake. Uh, pulled by a, team, by a team of horses or, or mules and they would just drag it along like a comb across the, the freshly cut hay whether it's cut with a mowing scythe or a horse drawn sickle bar either one but they would drag this across those clumps then they would dump it every so often all in a line so you would have you would create what's called a windrow and that windrow would allow the hay to be fluffed so to speak and then the, uh, the air would blow it and dry the moisture out so that you don't put damp hay up into the hayloft creating a dangerous condition called com uh, spontaneous combustion. But at any rate, this is a dump rake, and if you know, it's got all these springs on the back side of it, and I'm going to show you what happens to many, many, many of the springs off of these old dump rakes. For instance, this spring right here. Now we're going to go back to the uh, story of combating squirrels with trash can leaves. Now you can clearly see what you're looking at when you drive out in the country and you see uh, farmers or, or country people that have this type of a thing in the yard on a pole hold, holding uh, bird feeders or things like that. These are all the springs off of those old dump rakes and they just weld them to a collar or whatever and slide them down on a piece of pipe and weld the collar to the piece of pipe. This particular one here has six of them so it's going to take a lot of bird feed to fill this one out. Now back to our squirrel guard. It doesn't matter if you got a piece of pipe like this or if you have a 4x4. Four four. If you have a 4x4, four four, you just cut you out a 4x4 four four square. And actually a 4x4 four four is easier because you can cut out that square opening one inch smaller all the way around the perimeter and bend up the one inch flange and that gives you all the way around something to screw into your 4x4. Four four. The pipe is actually much more difficult than a than a 4x4, but the good thing is squirrels have a much more difficult time holding on to the pipe and jumping out and grabbing a hold of the edge of your uh, your squirrel guard. But whereas a, a post, a wooden post, they've got to able, they're able to get their claws and they get a good grip on it and they can just get right up there and just leap right out and get a hold of something like this and swing themselves up. I want to minimize that. But at any rate, here's all we got to do. You remember we made these guys here, pop rivet them on?
bring it up as far up on the post as you want and then go ahead and use self-tapping screws to bore holes right into your pipe and hold this into place. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go get some self-tapping screws. We're going to screw this in place. We're going to take it up in the yard and we're going to install it. Now, if you're using pipe like I'm using on this one here, all you have to do is just thud you a nice big hole in the ground and go ahead and set it in there and tamp it in place. If you've got a 4x4, of course, you got to dig that with a post hole digger and then tamp that square post into place. Pipe is a little bit easier in that respect, even though it is more difficult to attach your shield or your squirrel guard to. Nope, got to go deeper. I put one screw in so that thing would hit me in the head while I was putting it into the ground. What I'm doing here is uh, making those L brackets match the contour of that pipe. Okay, very similar in design to this original one I did over here, which, by the way, has never been breached from the bottom. However, I had to relocate it because as the tree branches grew up above, uh, twice I saw them jump off the branches, land in my uh, the center of the spring teeth up there, and then crawl out to the bird feeders. So I had to relocate it uh, because of that twice. So now I've got it fairly much out in the middle. So here's the new one right here. This one is physically much larger because I've got six available bird feeders locations. I guess I should hang some empty feeders on it just so you get a, an idea. But like you said, it is definitely much larger than the, uh, than the other. But I think that trash can lid is going to work out just fine. And it's something that almost everybody can do with the tools that you've got in your own shop. Nothing crazy particular about it at all. It's a very good idea and I appreciate that one viewer made that suggestion okay guys that's it uh, once again it's just something you can make with the uh, normal shop tools that anybody's going to have in their workshop i'm going to put up a game camera here eventually to where i can actually see what's what's going on you know when i'm not sitting on the porch you know drinking coffee but uh, kind of like to see how well this does i think it's going to do just fine the trick is getting rid of that big fat round um, lip on there giving them something to get a hold of and smash it down flat where they got nothing to even get a claw in so um, that all having been said uh, this is Fragman 44 and I am out of here guys. There's a slightly little better perspective. I still got two more feeders to hang on those. I don't know if I can put hummingbird feeders there or not, but I'm going to try. The one on the left right there is one that may be in contention for a squirrel climbing right up that post and getting a good grip right there on that post and leaping to the left. That's about uh, about 30 inches or better, about 31 inches, 32 inches. So it's a long shot, but I tell you what, they are sneaky little devils. And if it can be done, they can do it, definitely. I'm actually going to be able to use the top of that trash can lid to uh, go ahead and dump a little bit of, um, like, breadcrumbs and things like that for different kinds of birds. And you know what? This is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here for good this time.